developing countries that are at the front line of this battle. Those parts of the globe which will suffer the most and the soonest are not those parts of the globe which have actually loaded all those carbon dioxides in the atmosphere in the first instance. It's the exact opposite. Uh, the parts that will suffer the most, most quickly, uh, are those around the equator. But you have to understand this is also a crisis for the world. The fact is that if the poor are suffering today, then the rich will also suffer tomorrow. If parts of the world become increasingly uninhabitable, future climate change could lead to internal displacement and migration. Crop failures lead to food riots. Food riots lead to destabilizations of government. And we can imagine a kind of scenario where we have millions of climate refugees and the possibilities for destabilization, political and cultural destabilization, become very great. Predicting how the climate system may behave further into the future is a more complex task. There's uncertainty in, in climate projection, not least because we don't know what our generation when we're older is going to be doing and what the future generations are going to be doing. But based on the current trajectory, the various models predict that by the end of the century, the planet will be somewhere between three and five degrees hotter. There's no qualitative difference between the models in the sense that none of them are going to rescue us by projecting no temperature change or a reversal of warming. So the crucial uncertainty really is not that there is going to be some substantial degree of warming, it's about how much that warming is going to be. Even if we are looking at the bottom end of predictions, that's still really bad. Over 600 million people live in coastal areas that are less than 10 meters above sea level. Some models predict if we don't do anything to curb climate change, then we could be looking at 80 centimeters to a meter of sea level rise by the end of the century. The main impacts of what might seem a gradual rise of sea level is the risk from storms, surges of sea that we've never seen before. If we lose all our coastal cities, we've got a different planet and we've got an economic situation which is out of control. While there's a lot that is understood about what the future might hold, some scientists fear there may be other, more extreme dangers lurking beyond those that are already known about. These are called tipping points. A tipping point is where, in a part of the climate system, just a little bit of extra warming could nudge it into a different state, an irreversible change. There was quite a backlash from mainstream climate science to be talking about these high-impact events, possibly because many people assumed they would be of low probability, but there's a lot more interest in them now. Currently, it is our ongoing emissions that are driving global temperatures up. But if tipping points are crossed, that could spiral beyond human control. If we imagine a map of the world, it turns out that there are climate tipping points dotted all around it. Greenland and West Antarctica could be tipped into a reversible meltdown. The Atlantic Ocean has what we call an overturning circulation that could be triggered to collapse. There are major ecosystems that we could tip into an alternative state. For example, triggering a climate-induced dieback of the rainforest, turning it into a savanna. Once you've crossed the tipping point, that's it, you've triggered a catastrophic change. It's going to carry on getting even hotter because you've triggered something that you can't undo.